Hello guys, today we're going to look at how we can install the custom back paddles from Aqualux Crafts on Etsy onto the FlyDG Apex 4. This is a fantastic controller which just come out. It's got a really uh, innovative and novel uh, sort of gimbal system for the controls and it still unfortunately has these back buttons which do not fit a lot of people's hands. Some people have no problems with them. Myself, I can't use the inside ones. It just, it's not going to work. So let's first look at disassembly of the controller installing the back pedals, configuring them, making sure they all click, and then screwing in the um, the actual paddles to the to the harness part itself. So you'll see I've got four M2 screws here, and I've got three bits. Those bits are a hex 1.5. We have a T6. I'm using a TR6, which is the security bit, um, but you don't need that, that element, and a Phillips 00. So to, first things first, to, to open this controller, we have to just remove the D-pad and the two sticks. These are just friction lock, they just come off. Just a little bit of pulling and they pop off. You're not gonna do any damage, don't worry. Just worth noting, this will only fit on one way. Um, there's this uh, line in here which needs to go over this part. So now those three are off, we are gonna just separate this clear plate. It just pops off. Uh, you just gotta get your fingernails under it or a spudger. I'm gonna put that to the side. So we've got four screws, excuse the shadows, sorry, lighting's pretty bad. Uh, one, two, three, four. They are Torx, which is this bit here. So we're gonna put that in our driver and remove those four screws. Just gonna do this bit off camera because it's easier. That's one. You will need to be careful of the magnets that hold the faceplate on are put right next to these torque screws, which are also magnetic. So you'll find when you're unscrewing them, quite often the magnets will snatch them off the driver. So you might just wanna put a finger on them or make sure they don't get um, pulled away, because it can be a bit frustrating. It will also grab hold of your driver as well. They're, they're pretty strong magnets for their size. So this process is a little bit more involved than the Vader 3 Pro. It's, it's not incredibly so, and it's, I wouldn't say it's any harder, it's just, there's a, a daughter board that houses the back buttons now. Um, so we've removed all four Torx screws. We are gonna use a spudger. I've got this angled one, which I prefer because it just helps you get a little bit of purchase underneath the edges. So just sort of get it in there, lift it up, and you'll feel it just pops straight off. Once it's there, I just run it, run it along the edges, and eventually it just yields. So there is a ribbon cable on this side. Uh, it just means you've got to be careful when you're opening it up. So I'm going to open it from its left-hand side and fold it over to the right, just to keep in the ribbon cable where it should be. I'm going to just move these off camera for a moment. Okay, so we can keep these connected. It's, you can remove this ribbon cable. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to get back. Um, these, this is where the back buttons are. It's secured by four Phillips screws. Um, we're going to have to just move this battery out of the way. So I'm going to, again, use my pry tool, just be careful prying the battery out of position because you do not want to uh, pierce the battery or damage the battery in any way. It's just held on with some adhesive on the back and it just lifts up. There we go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna now um, swap bits. I'm gonna move to my Phillips bit, try not to drop it this time. So all four of these screws out. These look like little black M2s as well, maybe. Something like that, they're pretty small. So we get these four out. What I would normally do if I'm doing this by myself is I'd have a strong magnet nearby that I just whack all the screws on just so they don't get knocked or, or misplaced because there's nothing worse than when you you put them all on one side carefully and then you bang into them or, or damage something and they all go flying. I've oh, just dropped one now saying that. I don't know where it's gone. It's gone underneath, that's fine reach down and get that. Right, so that's all four of the Phillips double zero screws out now. So I'm gonna fold this back on itself. There we go. So what we've got now is the harness part. Uh, they don't have a harness, they, this is just the four the four buttons. So we're gonna just use the my pry tool, just get under there. You can see these, these are the main points that are holding this, just four. The other two aren't, aren't as, uh, aren't as used. So we're gonna just get underneath there. 
you just want to be careful because this thing is quite flexible, quite bendy, quite breakable. Um, okay, so we can now see that's off and everything's clean in place. Just to make sure this is around the right way, you'll see we have these curved parts. This is the underside, yeah? Don't install it this way. The buttons, the top part here is higher than the bottom part and these are curved and rounded. That means it's the bottom. So we're gonna flip this over. You may have noticed things have moved around somewhat. I've had to make a revision to the harness part of the paddles um, due to them not springing back always on some controllers. So what I've done, I've <clears throat> you'll notice these two pieces of rubber here and here now. Uh, these just provide much uh, springier um, feedback on the buttons. It's, it's good, it works well. Um, everyone will receive these, okay? I did send out a couple to people that uh, before I've made this change, I've shipped them out a new version, a new improved version two, um, just to make it right. So we're gonna cover uh, fitting the um, springy bits in. So we're carrying on from where we were. We just place the curved part into the controller. You'll see I've taken my motors out. I've had this controller open so many times that I really just cannot be bothered to keep fiddling around with the motors. So I've just disconnected them for now. Okay, so this is seated in. We just need to make sure that these four points are pushed down nice and firm. That's what holds those in place. So we're just gonna push them onto the pins. As I say, I've got a malformed pin here. Mine doesn't go on great, but it's there. I'm just gonna cover a couple of the, the common troubleshooting problems that we might see. So now that's done, we're gonna put these screws in. I lost one of these tiny black screws that hold these. Um, I've replaced it with an M2 six mil, same as we used uh, elsewhere. It works, you know, it's not, it's not the nicest, it's a little bit too big, but it does work. So when it comes to putting these screws in, don't go too tight. What I tend to do is go until I start feeling resistance and then do maybe a half turn back, something like that. So I screw in the end ones first, just because they help hold the rest in place. So if you, if you do these screws too tightly, you will notice problems on the back paddles. Um, we'll cover that in a sort of troubleshooting in, a little, in a, just a minute. Let's get these screws in. So again, just to have your resistance then sort of a half turn back. Final screw. Okay, so um, check the buttons now, the paddles. I can feel this one isn't clicking as I'd like, so I'm gonna loosen it a smidgen. I can now feel that's clicking. Um, so what I will do at this point <clears throat> is, when before you assemble, make sure you've got the power button on. Mine's in the other room at the moment. And that this, uh, the, the charging dot piece is, is put in where it should be. Um, so now that's in, again, when we assemble, we don't wanna make sure, we, we want to make sure we don't pinch this ribbon cable. Um, so I'm gonna just drop this in. If you've got the motors in, you might find they fall out. So you'd probably wanna put the back of the shell on the front rather than the front of the shell on the back. Okay, it's push fit. Just check the buttons again. Right, that's all good. Sometimes you will notice that when you depress these buttons, they stick down. That normally means that you have done those screws at the back, uh, one, two, three, four, they are too tight. So if you've done this one too tight, it's the screw that's here or here that are too tight. Just what I tend to do is I push it in and then loosen the screws, you'll feel it click out. That's normally a good indication. Check it a few times. Sometimes giving it a wiggle uh, will be quite useful as well. Um, what happens is when we're testing the buttons as well, we're going straight down like this. With a paddle, that's not the same kind of forces that you apply. It's, it's more like push, putting down in this corner. It pulls down uh, when the paddle's in place. So we're gonna uh, cut this back in with the rest of the video now, but this is just a small um, quick advisory on how to get it working with the, um, you know, using all four screws with sort of rubber indentation that we have. Make sure you're not pinching the cable in this seam. Power button's in line. This can also be uh, sometimes uh, pulled out. So you just, just reseat it in position. Go around the edge, make sure everything's just friction fits, click together. Importantly, check the buttons again. Right, everything's working. So now to the um, assembly back with the Torx screws again. So I'm gonna put my Torx bit in, which is here. And this is where you'll really notice these magnets 
next to the torque screw holes to be a bit of a pain. So I like to keep one finger on the screw as it's going in, otherwise the magnet just sort of snatches it away. Um, same with the Flydigi uh, Vader 3 Pro. Don't do these screws up too tight because they're just going into plastic, you know, they're not going into heated insets or anything, inserts. So what will happen is if you over tighten this, it's just gonna, it's just gonna strip the hole and you'll end up with a, a loose screw and a loose, loose, loose fitting controller shell, which nobody would like. Especially on this one, because it's such a new one and it's, uh, it's pretty expensive for a fly digi controller, but I'm gonna be honest, they are the best controllers I've used. So I'm gonna be sticking with these. I use mine on the Xbox with a, uh, gully, gully, gully kit, gully kit, um, Goku is it's absolutely fantastic. Right, all the torque screws are in place. Again, not too tight. I'm just doing it till there's some resistance, then we're done. So we are going to put the magnetic face plate back on. Just make sure it's clipped in all the way around. And we will now put these parts back in place. Now remember I was saying the D-pad only fits in one way. This bit goes in the top left for me. It's a different angle for you, I'm sorry. Right, just push it in till it's in. These tabs here go top and bottom. Just push fit. Right, we are now on the home stretch. So we've got these four paddles or buttons. Let's just check they all work again. Always check that because it's, it's always easier to disassemble sooner rather than later. I'm going to move to a hex 1.5 bit now and these are some uh, M2 screws. Now, you didn't see these in the Vader 3 video, but they are they are included if you purchase it. We've got two types of paddles here. So um, these are for smaller hands or a slightly different grip. I use these ones here. I have a, a larger grip on the controller and I like to use uh, my ring finger, this one, uh, to, to activate the paddle sort of a bit lower. So what I do is I take an M2 screw I normally keep things flat just to make sure you're going in. These ones aren't magnetic, it's really annoying. Um, I'll place it on the hole. And I just start screwing in just till it's, you'll feel, you'll feel it bite. And what we want to do is make that come just proud of the surface of the button. Just proud, you know, you can maybe see a quarter of a mil there, something like that. And gonna, Gonna do something similar for the second one. Appreciate it's dark, sorry, I'll try and keep the stuff in the frame and in light. Again, in nice and straight, you'll feel it go in. It just cuts the, the threads as it goes in. Just proud, same sort of distance, quarter of a mil, something like that. Now, once that's in, if you rest it over the holes, you'll kind of feel them find their own position. I can feel that that is now those pieces that are proud are just flush with the holes. So I'll screw one fully in. Just slipped out because it wasn't proud enough. And now I'll start to screw in um, the second one. Now it will go straight in. I could have come a little bit more out than 0.25 of a mil there, but we'll get them both in and then Get them again don't go too tight with this you'll know when it's good um, the last thing you want to do is strip these out if you did a bit of glue in there or something I'm sure would work and that's the first one and we'll move to just I'm gonna come a little bit more proud this time let's get that in the light let's go around half a mil something like that a little bit more, there we go. So second one in place, same same amount, just proud. So the second I got this controller, I actually just took it upstairs, upstairs and took it apart. I haven't really used it properly yet, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to actually using it and seeing what it's like, uh, which I'll be doing tonight. I'm probably on Warzone, uh, I would imagine. I miss that there's no like sort of hardware trigger stops, but I'm under the impression there are some kind of software trigger stops. So that's that should be very good, but it's worth a try. So again, just get get these both uh, both in so they're done. Once they've they've gone in a smidgen, you're all good. 
So I'll try and show roughly how um, this sits. And I'll also try and show actuation distance for the button. There's a bit of slop because of the way they're positioned. So they, they will activate before, you know, you can carry on moving through after activation. Uh, so I'm gonna hold this controller and then try and get my hand in frame. So you can see here that middle finger for these ones and then um, these ones are all good. You can, you can hear and feel everything clicking and that's good. So activation, uh, sorry, actuation distance. not far it's not far maybe it's maybe a mil and a half two mil something along those lines um that works really well i think so that is how you will install the paddles for the vader 4 and they are available on etsy in a range of colors bye